My name is Matt Workman, and I have a Vicon stage at my house. My house isn't this big, it's quite a normal sized house, and it was came together as a bit of an experiment, perhaps, to see how small and indie can we make a Vicon system, and what are the results when you do that. Are they good, are they bad? Spoiler alert, they're pretty good, they're really good. Can we go to the next slide? Quick overview of what we're gonna go through is a little bit my background. We're gonna look at my home setup. We're gonna see things that I've made with it. I'll let you decide if they're good or bad. I think they're okay. And then some final tips, ending of presentation type things will be happening after that. Let's go to the next one. Any filmmakers here? I think there's some. I'm one of you. I'm also a game dev. I'm also one of you. I'm so incredibly relatable. If we go to the next slide and hit play, here's a little bit of a reel of the work I did when I was a cinematographer. Hey, there it goes. So that's me wearing dad shoes and I'm on set and I'm programming a techno dolly, which is a very large, fun camera toy. Closer, awesome. And uh, this was the type of shoot that I was doing as a filmmaker. And this led to a lot of planning in 3D, which we call previs. And this is a plosive mic right now. And um, I learned how to do this with companies like The Mill and MPC. And then I went on to make my own 3D cameras and tools and was a bit of a cinematographer. That's me operating. And a previs artist, which is fairly unique, still is, I think. And at one point, Epic Games came to me and asked me to build these type of tools in Unreal Engine. And I started to do that. And I built a video game out of the uh, previs. And it's called Cinetracer. This is it featured in American Cinematographer, a trade journal. And long story short, I'm a game developer now. I make this kind of stuff. And I use metahumans. And I need a lot of metahuman animation, which leads us perfectly to the next slide here. Metahumans, really any avatar, how do we animate these? So come with me on a journey uh, through my progress of learning how to do that, which begins on the next slide here. I started with some hand animation. I'm not an animator. I was a filmmaker. That didn't go great. We'll see some of it. Uh, I went into some VR mocap. I've done some VR game dev. And I forget the third one, but we're going to find it together as we start here. So this is some of my like first work with the metahumans. They dropped, and I just wanted to make music videos with them. Uh, I still like doing that. And this is just, that looks painful. This is some traditional animation that's happening in engine. That was kind of new and novel at the time. And it was combined with live face mocap, which was new at the time. I think it's so cool. This is another example of that. And so we're just looping body animation. That's like the extent of my animation skills. It will never get better than that. But I have other ways of getting animation on them now. Next, uh, I do what any VR developer should do with a metahuman is map the fingers to index controllers. It's a rite of passage, sort of a VR chat challenge. Then we go both hands, solve elbows. And then naturally, it leads to 10 Vive trackers. And I was doing this, a lot of this, uh, in my basement still then. So that's, that's pretty much the extent of uh, Vive VR mocap. I think it's pretty good. And I started to make some VTuber experiments and presentations. I was making an app for VTubing at the time. It never came out, but these are some of the experiments of it. And this is all VR-based, VR tracking. And this is just using the head to control the motorcycle. I like that one. And then I eventually came to, I guess, more traditional mocap. And I started with inertial mocap. It's a great entry point. I learned a lot using this system. However, there are some uh, quirks to it. There's a lot of hand animation cleaning up, and it, it takes a while to end up with results like this. However, they are, it's a really good starting point. This takes us to uh, indie optical mocap. At the time, I wasn't that familiar with optical mocap. I think a lot of people say, like, what's that suit? It's not really the suit. In this case, it's these cameras around us. It's like a really fancy Steam VR system, outside in, and... Um, I was lucky enough to get a tester system set up in my basement. It was a bit of an experiment. What would this look like? Is it any good? Hey, what's up? And uh, let's go to the next part. Like any good YouTuber, I made an unboxing video. This is what it would look like if you received 10 videos in the mail. It would be the best day of your life. It would look like this. You'd be as happy as me in this video. And this is my basement. I don't know why my basement has a drop ceiling, but it does. It, I'm not lying. That's my house. It looks like an office park, but that's it. And so I don't know anything about optical mocap. I was taught by Vicon over Zoom. It was probably a lot of Zoom calls, but through some Zoom calls, how to set this up, how to put the suit on, but no like official training. And it's like, how good are those results? I will just qualify. That's the female uh, Vicon avatar. I didn't know how to change it at the time. 
But here we are on a metahuman, and this is like day one and a half, and it's all live. So like all this stuff coming up next, there's no recording. I didn't record it, there's no post processing. I was moving like this, and it was going to a computer, and I just hit screen record for like all of this stuff, that's like full live. The concept at the time was a bit VTuber, which was live. It's like, how good could this be if you just like, you know, did it live? The body is just a given. I should really focus probably more on it, but like Vicon solves the body perfectly. So we move right on to the even more fun things on the next part here, on the next reel, and that is props. I still think that this is pretty cool. Some people call me the box guy. Some people call me the chair guy. These are, these are the reasons for that. It's whichever one of these caught you on LinkedIn or whatever. No one calls me the uh, treadmill guy. You can feel free to call me that now. Uh, the lightsaber guy. This is also a good one. And just to prove that and show, again, this was live, just fully live, that the prop tracking is extra special with optical mocap. And Vicon does it really well. And it goes just really great with a metahuman skeleton. Just bringing those two things together. This is just all live. We could be live streaming on Twitch taking donos, taking subs, all that. Uh, I'm not tracking the faces. This is a ripped Master Skin Chief from ArtStation, I believe, from Fortnite. And I just kept making experiments for a long time. It was a fun couple months there. And just try to make it look better and better. Again, just live, not rendering. I don't like rendering, um, and I don't like animating, yet we are still able to get results like this. This is just an infinite scrolling Quixel Mega Scans treadmill that I made. And if you saw the, like, walking in place situation with the treadmill. I'm not going anywhere, neither is the camera. It's just the set scrolling. This, if you find me on Twitter ever, it's still my pinned top tweet. It's gonna be hard to beat this one. This one went well. It had a side-by-side -side though, but um, didn't get sued by Disney. Didn't know how to do clothing at the time yet, but was trying. And if you check out Cinematography Database on YouTube, this has to be one of the highest views ones. This was sort of my like capstone thesis. How good can we get the tracking and do something pretty like normal? I think it's kind of difficult to make a 3D human look normal, move normal. It's pretty difficult because uh, we all know what that looks like. And this was a test of doing something normal like sitting in a chair. I don't know if everyone sits in a chair like that, but that was my take on normal. That video goes into it a little bit more and how this is possible. We 3D scanned a chair. That's no longer free. I guess. Well, it's free for some companies to use reality capture, um, but was using reality capture to scan a chair. And at this point, I started to actually record the mocap, bringing it un into Unreal Engine, start to think about using it for, um, for games and applications. But everything up into this was just live, just straight rendered or screen recorded, so no rendering, which is really light, it's fast, helped me to understand the system really well. I forget what the next slide is. There it is, virtual clothing. Okay, so during this, using MetaHumans, there's not a lot of clothing available. So I started to make them. Shout out Marvelous Designer, spent a long time in there to try to make clothing. And a side business that popped up from this is I started making clothing for MetaHuman, so that's pretty cool. And in the, uh, the next slide here for this video, this is bad. This was early. I didn't know how to do Chaos Cloth back then. It's a Naruto skin, so that's cool. But this just shows some of the progression of um, making skins, learning how to make skins for MetaHumans and then combining it with the Vicon mocap on the MetaHuman, the whole thing is just really, really cool. I've always wanted to make like cinematics from when I was little, and this is probably as close as I'll ever get to it. At this point, something I do with, um, I don't know if you want to call it my VTuber, but when I'm like acting in the suit, uh, I use it to just show off the virtual clothing that I'm making and just show the fidelity of the clothing and mocap, really good mocap makes anything in this space, I think, look really good. And all of this, I am recording it now, but there is no post-processing. No post-processing. Smarter people than me can certainly clean this mocap up even further. I don't know how to, and I don't feel like I need to. This is just like perfect for me. I just go right, right to take. And this is using, we'll just keep moving on. This is a project I did where I recreated the uh, Lo-Fi Girl setup. When I program, I just like have to listen to Lo-Fi Girl. So I recreated the setup. I posted it. They saw it. We touched base and they reposted it. So that's like a huge achievement unlocked for me. I still like this. And if I live stream, it's still my intro. Again, this is gonna be hard to top for me. Moving on. So I am a game developer and I'm using this for pretty much looping background body animation. And with MetaHumans, it's pretty tricky to get just people sitting there looking normal and just talking and doing normal things that filmmakers would need for previs 
and this is perfect for that. And I want to say that this is a session that I did uh, a little while back. These are boring, but they're perfect. These are the exact types of animations we need. And if you've used any other systems, getting stuff like this, sitting down, standing up, and just doing these type of things, like we're tracking fingers, all of this. This is just like no cleanup. This is, this is difficult to achieve sometimes. So it's really nice. And these are the type of things that I'm using or I'm producing for my game. Probably go in the marketplace. This is a very old build of my game, but it does show applying this mocap to characters. Everyone in the background, I've made most of those clothes. I'm still learning. And I made most of them, I think all of the mocap. This is, uh, again, this is an old system, but I like it. We're just able to do what we need with the face separately and just looping the Vicon mocap. It's a little jittery. I didn't know how to loop it back then. I can loop the body mocap a lot better now. But this is an in-game, this is the Unreal 4 version of the game uh, happening all in real time. And the metahumans and you know, this type of mocap just really brings the scene to life. I would not have thought that I'd be producing something like this um, before I had the Vicon system. This stuff looks very natural. I like it a lot. Moving on, um, my passion project, which I have not turned into a making any money project yet, I would love to, is to combine music with all of this. I love the violin. They're doing it. I'm trying to do it. I'm a drummer. And this project allowed me to get a virtual drum set here and start to track it. So tracking bodies, not a problem. How about drumsticks? They move really quick. They're kind of small. How's it going to go? This is live. This is the first test. It's pretty good. TikTok likes glowing drumsticks. Those do really well. I'm also going too much with like the bass drum bouncing and stuff, but this is all of it put together. This is a more recent one with the new retargeting workflow they have. Um, it's working pretty well. And I'm still working on modeling out the drum set. I'm now bringing this animation into my game. This is in UE5. Bit of a fr it looks like I'm about to shoot him, but it's, it's, a, it's a viewfinder. Um, and we're bringing it in. So this is like tracked, tracked animation on the symbols. Tracked animation on the drums, are be the snare drums moving. And this is, I think, one of my latest takes, but the hi-hat's going. It just looks natural. And I was telling someone yesterday that my wife and I met, and I was a drummer, and she watches these videos back, and she can tell it's me. And I think that that's like a very, there's something there. I don't know why. I'll leave that for you to ponder. Is that the secret of life something? Well, we're going to know in the future. But I think that that's kind of cool. For VTubing, it's pretty high-end perhaps overkill, but there's actually a couple of people here who I've met who have since got these systems and they're producing like results better than this, certainly. I kind of, they've sort of taken up the torch and done much cooler things, but that's sort of uh, how it applies to VTubing. On the next slide, we're talking about indie game dev. What I want to say for this is, my favorite part about this is that it's very lo-fi. Once you set it up, these cameras are just plugged in. You can leave them on for like, what I've heard is like months. You don't have to, but you can. And it requires no batteries, which I appreciate a lot. There's no Wi-Fi connections. There's no batteries. You just go in there, you turn it on, and you have an FBX on your computer in what could be like five minutes. And that's a big deal, I think, for teams that don't have as much time. So there's not much cleanup. And actually recording it, using it day to day, can be done solo operator. Two is nice. Not everybody wants to get in the suit, but it can be done solo. Two is, two is probably the best. It's really fast workflow. I like it. And I believe we are wrapping it up on the next one. Thank you for watching. Appreciate it.